Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone watching at home. Welcome back to the Corsace Open Week 1. We're just about to the end of the group stage here in Week 1 of the tournament. We have two matches left, that being between Grease Monkey Deluxe and SoCal Supremacy, coming up in a half hour. But for this one, between Oompa Loompa Factory and Manic Oreos, I'm Dio returning from the last match and joining me this time, uh, my fellow All Caps, All Spaces gang, Miles. Welcome in. Good morning, Dio. How was the earlier match before this one? Um, a bit interesting. We had uh, double disconnect on the same map, which not not very often happens, but uh, it's, it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. So we'll get into the next match here. Oompa Loompa Factory versus Manic Oreos. Grandma Luco, Bartek, Defi, Riot, Raf, GPO, Emacetic, Jack Packs, and Kalangi for Oompa Loompa Factory, the top seeded group uh, team here in Group D. Manic Oreos, the bottom seeded team in the group actually out of qualifiers with Suntan, RNG, Defons, Gonza, Chop Gamer, AR9, Leonard H, uh, and believe that was Dark Karate, their mm -hmm. last player. We're already getting into the Protects as well here. Uh, so starting off for Manic Oreo is going to have the first Protect and then, then get into the first bans for each of these teams. Um, just based off the qualifiers results for these teams, uh, probably Manic Oreos. And actually, this is uh, a very interesting thing with this group. Uh, Oompa Loompa Factory versus Manic Oreos is uh, overall seed 8 versus seed 9 by Z-Score. So this is projected to be a very close match overall between these two teams um, as these are top and middle seed of the group. Manic Oreos I'm actually dropping to the bottom seed in max win earlier on in the tournament. But uh, just based off the qualifier results, you'll probably see maybe a hidden ban here from Manic Oreos to start things off and uh, potentially a protect on... Oh, it looks like it's going to be the Nomad 3 here protected for Manic Oreos. Um, not something you might have predicted from the qualifier results, but uh, doesn't always tell the whole story there, especially with players potentially missing from the roster during qualifiers. Yeah, and four Manic Oreos in their match yesterday against Max Win, they only had four players for most of the match. And then uh, Leonard H came in at the end, carried a couple of aim picks, but otherwise missing some key members of their roster. They were notably missing Suntan, Dark Karate, and AR9 for the entire match. So those were some big losses for them. Hopefully here up against Oompa Loompa Factory should have all of their players. I mean, looking at that roster for Oompa Loompa Factory, they have some hard hitting players definitely really want to have all players if you're Manic Oreos for this one because hard hitters like uh, Corian Maluko, Jack Pax, Raf GPO, Emacetic, that whole team if playing at their best can completely change the tide of a match so for Manic Oreos really need some of those top players to show up and Oompa Loompa Factory gonna protect that hidden two low AR map gonna be protected I think against Manic Oreos that's a really good shout especially if you have players like Kalangi, Jack Pax, and Bartek on your roster but for Manic Oreos, going into their first ban here, still have a lot of gimmicky maps on the board that you probably want to consider banning out with the current state of your roster. I think maybe something like the uh, Free Mod 2 or the Hidden 3, both could be good bans for them. I would agree. I would agree completely. Those are the, exactly the two maps that I was going to shout out as potentially bans here for Manic Oreos. So I uh, would be surprised to see one of those not get taken out here. Probably the free mod too, just given the much lower approach rate on that map as compared to everything else in the pool. Though, uh, if you do feel like you're just against a hidden team, maybe you want to ban out that hidden three. That said, Oompa Loompa Factory does have a lot of good hard rock players as well. Players like Kray Maluko and Raf GPO, and they are actually going to ban out that hard rock three. So not going to be the kind of hard rock flow tech pick. Yeah, this map is really difficult, Hard Rock 3. Probably one of the hardest maps in the pool, that aim control, just the tech aspects of that map. Really difficult for round of 32. I would put that map up there with Hidden 2 as probably the two hardest maps in this pool. So it makes sense if you want to ban it out, if you're not feeling comfortable on it. Oompa Loompa Factory does have players like Corian Maluko, like Riot, 
going to put in a really crazy performance on that one, I would predict. So not a bad ban by any means. And Nomad 5 ban coming out from Oompa Loompa Factory. That map is a textbook Nomad 5. So maybe perhaps predicting a little bit of a mechanics abuse angle to come out from Manic Oreos, which if they have all their players is a route that I could expect them to take in this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, players like Suntown are really good on the speed. RNG, Gonza, uh, Chalk Gamer, Dark Karate can also play it. So a lot of these players really, really solid in that regard. So uh, wouldn't be too surprised to even see something like a DT first pick here for Manic Oreos if they do want to go that route. In the meantime, though, waiting on the first pick for Oompa Loompa Factory, the Hidden 3 strikes me as a good first pick. The Free Mod 2 being still open, uh, also a pretty solid pick. Again, you have some good hard rock players on this team. So uh, that mix of having a team good enough to protect the low AR Hidden and good enough to force a hard rock ban also opens up a lot of the Free Mod pool for this team, I think with uh, the free mod one free mod two being pretty enticing options there that said that free mod one very very similar to the nomad three both of them pretty straightforward alt picks so uh i think too likely to see the free mod one here as the first pick and indeed it is just going to be the uh nomad five actually picked up here for oompa loompa factory as their first pick Okay, so am I crazy, or wasn't this map banned, or did we I have thought, a... I thought this was banned, yeah. Um, so we may have had a misfire on the screen clients, one way or the other. Um, and yeah, it looks like the stream sequence was messed up, so we'll get that fixed. And for now, I'm going to assume that the protects are... Uh, or sorry, that the bands are what was messed up as the protects, I think, made a lot of sense for both of these teams. Um, so we'll see what those bands are after we get through this first pick. In the meantime, Amesthetic Deppy doing a really good job here for Oompa Loompa Factory, holding on to that double FC. You do see Chalk Gamer on the other side on a reverse choke. Suntan also not too far behind. And there goes Deppy. So that full combo advantage now gone. Kareem Maluko and Raf TPO still holding some good supporting combo, though, and keeping the score lead on the side of Oompa Loompa Factory, not going anywhere for now. Yeah, but unfortunately for the side of Manic Oreos, despite having the slight combo lead now, RNG is really struggling on this one. Down at 87%, not any combo at all to be heard of for him, so really going to be tanking the score on the side of Manic Oreos. And the breaks do come out from mains as well, so now combo lead should be slightly in favor of Oompa Loompa Factory here at about the halfway point. But with RNG really struggling on this one, no chance at all for Manic Oreos to come back in this one unless the collapse comes in from Rafty Pio and Koryan Maluko. There goes Deffy, and now that combo lead is actually back in the favor of Manic Oreos, but there goes Chalk Gamer misses right at the end of that stream sequence, and now no FCs left, just the reverse choke for Sun Tan, but two big, big combos on Korean and Rap GPO there for the Factory. And this pick at this point now pretty much over and in the favor of the Factory. They will win their first pick. They will start off the match 1 0. Nicely done to them. Rolling into the ending here, 230k of score lead for Oompa Loompa Factory. Rap GPO with that 1k combo into the ending. Gonna be top scoring his team with 600k. But the story of this one, going to be the overall team performance for Oompa Loompa Factory being much stronger for Manic Oreos. You see the bottom end of Manic Oreos dropping out. You've got 131k from RNG, 339k from Mains. And every player on Oompa Loompa Factory above that 400k mark. You've got two 400ks and two 600ks. Meanwhile, top end of Manic Oreos, 630k for Top Shock Gamer, or almost 800k for Suntan, just not going to be enough with the bottom of the team not able to carry their own weight. But I believe that first pick did come from Oompa Loompa Factory, so it's just going to be a converted first pick for them. And it is okay. Looks like we got our sequence uh, changed. The Nomad 5 was actually the protected pick for Oompa Loompa Factory, with the Nomad 3 protect still being the same for Manic Oreos, and the bans are going to be what's different. It was actually a Hard Rock 3 ban coming out from Oompa Loompa Factory, with the Hidden 2 ban coming out from Manic Oreos, and that is the same ban they had yesterday, up against, I believe, Max Win. So that map being banned out in both of their matches so far. 
And this, again, doesn't surprise me too much. You have good speed players on the side of Oompa Loompa Factory, as we just saw. Uh, you also have a lot of very good reading players on the side of Oompa Loompa Factory, so the hidden two ban here from Manic Oreos makes a lot of sense. The Hard Rock 3 ban from Oompa Loompa Factory does surprise me a little bit with how good a lot of their Hard Rock players are. Um, but I suppose wanting to lean more into the speed, more into the hidden in this match as opposed to that Hard Rock... Um, and potentially looking at a couple of the scores from Manic Oreos, especially players uh, like Suntan, Dark Karate, RNG, can be very, very solid on that hard rock. Mm -hmm. And we're just, we're just starting off with the protects, Miles. We're just getting the protects out of the way early in this match. I mean, that's one way to do it. I feel like if one team pushes the ticket with their protect early, then you feel a lot more comfortable doing it yourself because... There's a lot of different ways to play the politics of protected picks. Like, a lot of teams wait until they get a break point before they bring it out. But if one team uses it, then you really don't have any pressure to keep your own to yourself because it, I feel like it's the most reactionary pick you can use in an OC tournament whenever protects are available. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can always start out with something else. I think, for example, in this match, the free mod one could have been a solid first pick for Manic Oreos. If you're protecting the Nomad three, pick another alt map and uh, see how the alt picks go. But the same argument can be made in reverse, right? If you win your protect in the Nomad three, well, suddenly the free mod one looks like a really good option as your second pick. So you can just kind of flip the order and it should be fine there for this team you can also just save it for later if you really want to the other team has their protect out of the way so you know they probably want to pick speed later on you can avoid some of those picks and try to go in especially with that hard rock three ban into some of the other kind of streamy aim control techie sorts of picks which are adjacent at the very least to that alt skill set so um, I think there are a lot of ways that you can play this, but just getting the Protect out of the way is fine when the opponent has already done so. Yeah, I mean, it's all about just like, I feel like that's just a bit of a pick strategy conversation you could have, like picking maps that are adjacent to the ones that you're really confident on. It's like a, a lot of people know that with like gimmick abuse and speed abuse, just picking the speediest maps or the most gimmick heavy maps. But I feel like it's less often you see it with a skill set like aim control alt, where you just overtly have two aim control alt maps in the pool, even perhaps three if you count something like the free mod two in there as well. So picking a map like this, it gives you a lot of information on other picks as well. Like this one, the Nomad three, you have the free mod one and free mod two elsewhere in the pool if you get a really good performance on this. And we're getting right into it. Manic Oreo's first pick, their protect, gonna be rolling out with Suntan, Shock Gamer, RNG, and Mains up against Raf GPO, Corian Maluko, Emacetic, and Kalangi for the side of Oompa Loompa Factory. All right, unfortunately, not as good of a start as Manic Oreos might have wanted Shock Gamer finding the early miss, but it is matched now a little later on by Raf GPO, so combo lead in favor of Manic Oreo. Score lead for now in favor of Oompa Loompa Factory with the three FCs still standing strong for both teams. A little bit of a combo advantage on Shock Gamer. Going to start to bring that score lead back the way of Manic Oreo slowly but surely. Accuracy very high for all players as well. 98, 99 across the board. There goes Suntan though. That's another full combo down for Manic Oreo. So the three FC lead now still going and no longer available for Oompa Loompa Factory. Kareem Aluko matching the drop there from Suntan again. Just a little bit later, a little bit more combo on the exit from that break trade for the side of Manic Oreos, but a little bit more score on the exit for Oompa Loompa Factory once again. Yeah, combo lead going to be about 100 for the side of Manic Oreos. A little bit more than that with the Corian Maluko drop, but... It's just Chalk Gamers about 100 combo lead over Raf GPO right now. And Suntan's now 200 combo lead over Corian Maluka, which is gonna swing that score lead back in favor of Manic Oreos really quickly, but RNG's act drop gonna be slowing that swing. In one of the slower parts of the map, you don't expect to see too many breaks right now. Really important to keep that combo afloat, and there it goes now, finally in favor of Manic Oreos. But Act Drops are going to keep swinging it back in favor of Oompa Loompa Factory. RNG needs to get that act together. I 
Marines also finding a few act drops there during that slower section with a bit of a change in rhythm as we get now back into a Kiai time, back into a place we may see a few more breaks. Amacetic the next to drop, Chalk Gamer to match, but that's a good trade for Manic Oreos, one of the FCs down now for Oompa Loompa Factory, and it's just Kalongi left in the 1v2 versus RNG and mains. Defawns with the zero in the name over there on the bottom right corner. Raph GPO, Korea Maluka with better supporting combo than Suntan and Chalk Gamer, but there go both the supports as well. And suddenly any stilts left for this house have fallen. Kalongi the only one with any combo, but the same can be said now for Manic Oreo, Suntan, RNG, Chalk Gamer all falling in quick succession. It's mains versus Kalongi on the FCs, but 130,000 score lead left up as a bit of support, a bit of foundation here for Manic Oreos on the first pick. And coming into the ending here with the FC still intact, I don't think there's anything that's going to switch this back the way of Oompa Factory. Manic Oreos clinch the pick at the end there. Slightly longer hold on the supporting combos for their side with the matching FCs to boot. And a massive FC from Mains there, being able to match Kalangi until the end. Mains didn't have the best match yesterday up against uh, Max Wind, but coming out here with an FC on the Nomad 3, their protected pick, that is a great sign for Manic Oreos mains. A player who, when he's popping off, it's really big for his team, and you can just see that right here. Great stuff from Manic Oreos on their first pick. But now, pick swinging back to Oompa Loompa Factory after that Nomad 5 victory being so definitive for them. I feel like they probably go straight into another tapping pick, but luckily for Manic Oreos, there's not too many tapping maps in this pool. You have the DT2 and perhaps even the Nomad 2, although that one is 185 BPM and more aim focused of a stream map, but they're actually gonna go for the DT3, okay. This map is a little bit interesting in the context of this map pool. It's uh, AR-10. A lot of aim control focus. Another alt map, though, just after losing the previous alt map to Manic Oreos. Yeah, this one is a little weird. We saw this in the previous match. It's a little bit more focused on the aim control, a little bit more gimmicky. Um, it is somewhat higher BPM. It is 150 BPM base, although uh, with 150.6 being displayed on the website, you can usually be pretty sure that that's going to be variable BPM. Um, correct me if I'm wrong there, but uh, we saw this in the previous match, and this was not really a tapping pick. It's a lot on the aim control, and especially awkward aim between some of the smaller bursts that exist in this map. I'm really curious to see how this one goes. I don't think I've seen this map being played too many times so far this weekend, or at least it wasn't played in the previous match I commentated. Not sure uh, exactly how popular this has been through the weekend. Again, I've been uh, out of town, so I haven't been paying too close attention to the rest of the group stage besides what I've seen today. But uh, definitely a little bit less straightforward than some of the other maps. So a bit of a surprise here after that Nomad 5 win. I feel like that leaves up, uh, at, at the very least, the DT2 as a pretty easy ban here for the side of Manic Oreos. So expected them to get that out of the way before the second round of bans here on the side of Oompa Loompa Factory as we get into this very, very aim-focused DT3 pick here. Obviously, still some bursts in between stuff, but you can see a lot of the high spacing jumps, a lot of the aim control to start things off in this map. Four full combos intact for Oompa Loompa Factory here at the start. RNG and Suntan alongside mains all having missed here at the start for Manic Oreos. And it's just Chalk Gamer and Suntan with any combo right now as RNG and mains continue to find misses here about a quarter of the way in. RNG really, really struggling with that accuracy. Needs to make a recovery there if they want any chance of taking a break point on this pick. But good news for Oompa Loompa Factory. That break from Korean Maluko, actually a Bancho miss. And so still on the four-way full combo. 150,000 score lead, only a quarter of the way into this map. Yeah, RNG, you can tell he was not meant to play this map, maybe forced to fill this one. Accuracy at 79, not a good sign for the side of Manic Oreos. Still have the big combos on Suntan and Shock Gamer, but they really need to see a full team collapse from the side of Oompa Loompa Factory to be able to make up for the difference that RNG is making in this one. But Chalk Gamer is the one to break, and there are still four full combos on the side of Oompa Loompa Factory. This is already looking extremely dominant for that side. 
Yeah, and these first two picks for Impa Loompa Factory have been really, really good for them. The Nomad 5 and the DT3 right afterward, well, uh, both just very, very strong picks for this team, and not much that Manic Oreos can do on either of them, whereas the first pick for Manic Oreos, that Nomad 3, still relatively close. We saw the matching full combo. It was decided by that support, but this time around, uh, support not needed for these two FCs. I mean... Yeah, it's a million team score for Manic Oreos. It's not quite 2v4 potential quite yet, but uh, the three-way full combo still going strong here for Oompa Loompa Factory is absolutely ridiculous, and they are going to be taking this by an incredibly wide margin. There's no comeback even possible at this point for Manic Oreos with the combos they have at this moment. Another break to come through for Suntan, RNG, and Korea Maluko. Also finding the break here, so it's just the two FCs for Oompa Loompa Factory, but uh, two FCs now is enough to 2v4 the pick. They're up above 1.6 million combined on this double FC. Another break for Mains, Suntan, and RNG to come through. Kareem Luko will find another break as well. Chomp Gamer has some combo, but that's really all you can speak of on the side of Manic Oreos. And Amacetic and Wrath GPO still holding on to this two way FC is a massive, massive score lead for Oompa Loompa Factory. Well over 3 million team score. 1.9 million combined team score for Manic Oreos. Amacetic and Raft GPO. Amacetic actually reverse choking that just barely behind the FC. But uh, those two alone could 2v4 the roster from Manic Oreos. Just to put in perspective how ridiculously ahead they were throughout that entire map. Yeah, never really felt to be a question for the whole duration of this pick. Oompa Loompa Factory just through and through the better team on this map. They had, uh, Manic Oreos had the good scores to try to carry. If Suntan and Shot Gamer were to have held on, it maybe could have been possible, but they needed help from the side of Oompa Loompa Factory, and they were not giving it to them at all. That was just pure domination on that one. But luckily for Manic Oreos, now it's their own pick again. And after that Nomad 3, they do have a very similar map in the free mod 1 available in the map pool. They want to squeeze that one out before the next ban phase, but it's going to be the Hard Rock one. Okay, this is a map that they won yesterday in their matchup against Max Win, off of some very good scores from RNG and Leonard H, both getting very high scores on that one, I believe. A FC and a reverse choke from the two of them. But this is one of the most comfortable maps in the pool, so I feel like it's always a risk picking that into a great team like Oompa Loompa Factory. But it's a pick. I, I like to see this pick from Manic Oreos for sure. Yeah, it's definitely one that feels a little bit more uh, RNG, not to make a pun out of it, but definitely one that feels a little bit more RNG. Consistency in early stage of any tournament is always a little bit of a toss-up because you know the other team is going to be relatively strong on it. That said, I think there's a reason they picked Hard Rock 1 as opposed to the Nomad 1 or the Hidden 1. Hard Rock 3 banned out by Oompa Loompa Factory. Yeah, there are good Hard Rock players on this team. Yeah, they are going to be comfortable on the general skill set for consistency, but... But uh, Manic Oreos with a very good, a very comfortable hard rock roster. A lot of very good aim players as well that we haven't seen so far. Dark Karate in particular, a very, very good hard rock aim player from Canada. Um, so should be a good asset for this team on the hard rock one here. So let's see how well they can do on this overall. Dark Karate did not play this in their previous match. But again, uh, I was missing through the whole match. So... Uh, assuming Dark Karate is here, likely to be somebody to sub in, for example, for mains on the side of uh, Manic Oreos. RNG and Leonard both getting about 700k on this last time around should stay in here. Uh, and we'll see if Chalk Gamer comes back in. It was a two miss for Chalk Gamer, so still a very good score despite being down around the 550k mark. And it is going to be Suntan, Chalk Gamer, RNG, and mains actually in for this. No Leonard this time around instead replaced with uh suntan to come in instead of leonard uh and now it's raf gpo kareem aluko amacetic and defi in for oompa loompa factory again kareem aluko uh a very very solid hard rock player um not super familiar with raf gpo defi hard rock i know amacetic hard rock is not usually his preferred mod so uh, we'll see how well this matchup goes between these two teams. Mains off to a bit of a rough start here. Did find the early break, did find a lot of accuracy drops, but that early break is matched by Deffy on the side of the back. 
And this map's on the longer side. Early breaks won't have too high of a consequence. Yeah, as you mentioned, HR roster for Oompa Loompa Factory not having perhaps the most comfortable HR players as we see with Amesthetic finding a drop right there during the slow part, but Rap GPO should be very strong on this. I know him to be a very competent aim player. Should be able to support Corian Maluko very well on this one. As we get through these first jumps into the Kiai, lead is just a thousand points in favor of Manic Oreos as Mains has brought his combo back and no other breaks have been found for either of the three players on Manic Oreos, but there goes Suntan right after that burst, gonna find a drop. And now lead gonna shoot back in favor of Loompa Factory, but the slider break match with Amesthetic, but there goes Chalk Gamer as well. So just RNG and Mains now on the combos up against two FCs and the reverse choke from Defi on the side of Oompa Loompa. Yeah, it's just an unmatched FC here now for Oompa Loompa Factory. Chalk Gamer and Mains and Suntan all breaking there right at the end of that section. And so it's RNG versus the world. And, uh, you know, uh, those stories about Atlas don't always end so well. Raph GPO does find the miss here. So one of those FCs gone. Deppy now also finding a miss. So uh, suddenly Atlas looking a little bit stronger than usual here for RNG. Korea Maluko still matching that full combo. Amasetic still ahead of any of the support on the side of Manic Oreos. And Mains really struggling with this map, not having a good time on this pick. Uh, finding quite a lot of misses at this moment. But. As long as this FC from RNG holds, there is still a chance at a win for Manic Oreos on their second pick. Amesthetic does find the drop, so one of those supporting combos gone. And the rest of the support, Chalk Gamer and Suntan, were matching. But there goes RNG, there goes Chalk Gamer, there goes Mains. And suddenly, it's all too heavy for the side of Manic Oreos. Korea Maluko still on the full combo now for Oompa Loompa Factory. And Raph GPO with a little bit of supporting combo there. That score lead now well over 250k and climbing only up from here for Oompa Loompa Factory. Corian Maluko, maybe the last player you want to see staring you down with an FC if you're on the side of Manic Oreos. He is so strong over all these years on the HR one of his strongest mods, and he just, he can still do it. Second half of 2024, Corian Maluko still whooping your ass on the hard rock. And I think uh, this is the reason why you don't necessarily want to pick hard rock into this team, even though they may have banned it, even though they may have shown a lack of confidence on that hard rock three. Uh, you get one player like this on the opposing team who can put up 850k plus. Even if he doesn't FC, this is still more than enough to create a very comfortable score lead for Oompa Loompa Factory. And in these middle seed matchups, seed 8 versus seed 9, this is the kind of performance that strikes fear into the heart of man. Because this one pop-off performance is all it takes to make it not even close. Will find a break here at the very end of the map, but still over a million score by himself on the ending choke there with the last couple of streams coming through. 600k on the one slider break, the only drop for RNG on that map, but uh, not close, unfortunately, for Manic Oreos with Kremaluko generating uh, alongside a couple of other solid performances there. 550k for Raf GPO, 400k is for both Amesthetic and Defi matching Suntan and Chalk Gamer. So uh, the whole team really ahead in comfort compared to the side of Manic Oreos. Very, very good team score for the side of Oompa Loompa Factory. And that's now a 3-1 lead for them going into the second round of bans. So Manic Oreo behind needs to make these bans count, needs to make these next picks count as well. Yeah, but I feel like for Manic Oreos so far in this match, Oompa Loompa Factory it feels like they've just had the team diff on all three of those map wins so far, where just the third and fourth players on the side of Oompa Loompa Factory consistently outdoing the third and fourth for the side of Manic Oreos. And especially when you have the leader in performance as well with a player like Corian Maluko, it's looking really dire for Manic Oreos. But they're still in it, only down three to one. And now into this ban phase, I'm curious to see if they do go for that DT2 ban after the dominant win on Nomad 5 that Oompa Loompa Factory had. But they're taking their time with it. And here's the thing, even if Manic Oreos win this match, 
they're not guaranteed to get out of the group, right? Let, let's talk about that for a second because we have the ban phase as a bit of a buffer here. Um, Oompa Loompa Factory beat Max Win, and then Max Win beat Manic Oreos. And then if Manic Oreos beat Oompa Loompa Factory, you have head-to-head -head wins for all teams against each other. So it comes down to the point difference. And right now, Oompa Loompa Factory are ahead uh, four point difference because their one win against Max Win, they won that six two. Um, and Max Win beat Manic Oreos six to three. So um, Manic Oreos currently down at a minus three point difference, and they would have to win this, I believe, at least. Is it six to two? Actually, I think it might be six to two, because um, they're down seven point difference from uh, Oompa Loompa Factory, and each of those points is doubled. So I think they would have to win at least six to two to get out in first. If they want to get out in second, they have to win at least six to uh, six to three so that they're at a zero point difference. So if they win one more point for the side of Oompa Loompa Factory, uh, Manic Oreos, I don't think actually get out of the group anymore because if they win six four, that's at best two point difference up and then they're tied in point difference with Max Win. Uh, to whom they lost earlier. So the head-to-head -head would decide it if they are uh, equal in point difference with Oompa Loompa Factory, again, still being up at uh, two point difference in that scenario. So basically, if Oompa Loompa Factory win any other pick here after these bands come through, uh, Manic Oreos are out of the group. They are out of group stage. They have uh, been eliminated from the tournament. So uh, Manic Oreos from here, it's already tournament point from them. They need to win every single pick from here on if they want to get out of groups at all. Um, and even at best, now that it is three points up for Oompa Loompa Factory, they're going to get out second if they win this match 6-3. So Nomad 1 ban from Oompa Loompa Factory. Uh, they saw the Hard Rock pick, Hard Rock 1 pick, excuse me, and they said, well, let's not take any chances on the other map we consider to be a little bit RNG. The DT2 ban, I think, very, very solid for Manic Oreos. You saw what happened on the Nomad 5, the DT3. Don't let them pick more speed if possible. And now the Free Mod 2 coming out here for Oompa Loompa Factory, looking at that Hidden 2 ban, looking at that Hard Rock 1 performance and saying, hey, maybe Free Mod is a solid shout for us. It's another lower approach rate map a little bit gimmicky as well for this one yeah but then because it's free mod you also have the ability to put a player like Corian maluko on that comfort hr or a player like bartek on the hidden as well so i think this is a really good pick for oompa loompa factory especially as manic oreos look to be playing with some roster constraints again haven't seen any of ar9 dark karate or leonard h so far in this match or gonza for that matter i believe so once again, perhaps playing with only four players, which is not a great sign for them, I think, for the outcome of this match, especially as they need to win literally every pick straight now if they want to remain in the tournament. Yeah, and I, I feel like it's hard to uh, it, it's hard to think about that in the middle of a match. So unless they did the math before they went into this, they might not even know. Uh, that even if they win from here, they have to win every single pick in order to get out of groups now. So um, we'll see a bit later on if that is the case. But for now, just getting into the free mod too and taking a look at the rosters for both of these. Hidden Hard Rock for Raft GPO, Bartek on the Hidden, Amacetic and Kalongi on the Nomad, Suntan on the Hidden, Chalk Gamer on the Hard Rock, Overmod Hard Rock for mains here on the side of Manic Warriors, and RNG on the Nomad. And you can see who the inspiration of this map was instantly at the start. This is a Neonaro custom, but map is uh, heavily inspired by Half Slash style. So if you're familiar with that mapper, you know his awkward patterning is really unique and really difficult to play. And you can already see that through the start. Accuracies are fairly low across the board, but a lot lower for the side of Manic Oreos. RNG down at 87, mains at 90%. And that act lead alone is going to give the lead over to Oompa Loompa Factory, despite the early break coming out from Bartek. Yeah, and now it's, you know, it's the FC, if the, it's the FC match for Manic Oreos here. The combo ahead on mains over Bartek, but the accuracy doing a lot better here for Oompa Loompa Factory, mostly off RNG, down at that 87-88% act, and... 
again, you're seeing this roster basically the same four players on every map for Manic Oreos and what could have been on paper a very close match, maybe a little bit constrained by this roster for Manic Oreos. There goes Kalangi, though, another miss on one of those FCs for Oompa Loompa Factory, and this may not have been in the cards for Oompa Loompa Factory when they picked this Miles. This is their pick. Chalk Gamer will finally drop. Mains will finally drop as well, so two quick breaks in succession, but Suntan and RNG still holding the full combos, matching Raph GPO and Amacetic. Raph GPO also on that Hidden Hard Rock does have the multiplier, but there goes Amacetic on the Nomad, and I was going to say the Hidden Hard Rock may be more liable to break than the Hidden or the Nomad, but it turns out the Nomad and the Hidden for Oompa Loompa Factory more liable than that Hidden Hard Rock. Bartek following it up with a break in quick succession too now with that one as well. And even with that matching break from main, even with Suntan and RNG breaking on the slider, even with Raph GPO finally breaking on the slider, it's not going to be nearly enough for Oompa Loompa Factory. And the break point comes out here. Four members down, no problem. Manic Oreos managed to take the break point and managed to start up what needs to be from here a reverse sweep. RNG, 89%, but able to lock in that combo for the entire map is actually so huge for Manic Oreos. His score would have been nerfed so hard if he found any break throughout the map, but holding, I believe, until the big slider, just so massive for him, and the rest of the team just showing up in spades as well. Chalk Gamer, Suntan, Mains, all putting in the work, and the repeated breaks from Bartek really hurting their side during that one, as well as Kalangi. And that map, it felt close until the very end, but for Manic Oreos, they finally get that lifeline in the tournament now. They got that first point of five they need to win in a row in order to remain in Course Ace Open. Let's see if they can keep the train going. They won the break point. Now they need to win some of their own picks here. They need to win another four in a row. So that'll be two of their own and two break points if they do want to remain in the tournament. Uh, they need to go without that last pick and win every pick remaining here. Let's see if they can do it. Let's see where they want to go after that free mod too, because on the two alt picks so far, that's where they found their wins. No mod three and the free mod two. Yeah, the free mod two is lower approach rate. It's CS 4.4, AR 8.9. It's got some rhythm in it, but uh, the no mod three, again, similar BPM at that 130 BPM, the free mod two at that 160. I feel like it all just leads up to that free mod one pick. Um, that is the only remaining alt map in the pool. It is the only thing that is relatively low BPM outside of that hidden three, which is also an option. But I think after you win a free mod, maybe dip back into those free mods and see if you can make something happen there. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious to see where they go with this pick. No mod four though. Okay, they're gonna okay. go with the slider aim, not not picking that other awkward aim alt map that was in the pool after protecting and winning the Nomad 3. I thought they would go for that one, but deciding to go for the slider aim first. And it definitely is uh, a little interesting. Obviously, the Hidden 3, I think, a much less likely pick given the double overmod hard rock on that free mod 2. Um, and the fact that they did ban out that Hidden 2. They have not picked any free mods or Hiddens themselves so far. Um, so clearly not super comfortable on the Hidden as an overall team, even if they do have somebody who can play the Hidden on that free mod 2. Um, but the Nomad 4, definitely a little weird here. Just because, again, it's, it's not necessarily an alt map. It's mostly the slider aim. But there is a lot of stream aim in this map. There is a lot of flow uh, and kind of awkward, snappy stuff in this map as well. So there is a, still a high element of that aim control, which finds its way into a lot of alt maps. It's what we call adjacent skill sets, right? It's not alt, but it's a, a lot of times alt players also tend to be good at tech because it hits a lot of the same basic skills that are required to play alt maps well. Yeah, for sure. But this one is, it's a much different feel than the uh, Nomad 3 and Free Mod 1, I'd feel, because this one, it's mostly focused on the slider aim. In the uh, grand scheme of tech maps, this one is very aim heavy, very slider aim heavy. And that, I feel, is like probably the furthest away from the alt skill set that you can get within tech. Mm -hmm. But should still be a fairly decent pick for Manic Oreos. I really don't think they're going to have that fourth player issue on this one like they had on some of uh, Oompa Loompa Factory's earlier picks. All right, getting into it. Same four-player roster here once again for Manic Oreos, basically confirming the fact that they are down four. 
Kalongi, Raph GPO, Amasetic, and Bartek for Oompa Loompa Factory. As a couple of early breaks come out for Raph GPO, Amasetic, Suntan, RNG. Two full combos left for each team. Kalongi, Bartek, Top Gamer, and Mains on each side. This map on the shorter side, though. Every break is going to have massive consequences. You see here, everyone holding strong, but the combo's still in favor of Boom Factory. That's a traded break oh, no. for both RNG and Emesetic, but Mains is going to break right after that on the Buzz Slider. That is such a tragic break for him. And it looked like Chalk Gamer also found a slider break right before that. I think that is both FCs down. Yes, it is. Both full combos gone now for Manic Oreos. Kalongi and Bartek still holding here for Oompa Loompa Factories and the team seemingly picking for each other here as we come into the second half of the match after that second round of bans. Bartek will find the drop, but Kalongi and Rap GPO still holding strong. The FC and the reverse choke still ongoing for each of those players. Suntan and RNG did have some combo. There goes RNG. Bond now mains with some support here for Manic Oreos, but it's never going to be enough unless Kalongi and Raph DPO found breaks earlier in the map. 99% accuracy for Kalongi as well. Just take a look around the rest of the lobby. There's a 98 for Chalk Gamer and a 99 for Suntan. But aside from that, everybody else is 97 or below. So those high accuracy plays on the top row are very, very impressive for those players. Very nicely done as well from Kalongi on the full combo. Raph DPO with the reverse choke. And that now is a fourth point for Oompa Loompa Factory and officially Manic Oreos no longer able to get out of the group. Yeah, Kalangi, man. This guy, the four-digit tech player extraordinaire. It's been like maybe three or so years since he's bust onto the scene and he is one of the most trustworthy hands you have in any rank-restricted tournament on these tech picks. And that 9100 FC... So strong coming out from him. But yeah, unfortunately for Manic Oreos, it's now mathematically impossible for them to leave the group. But I believe we'll probably still continue this matchup at the very least. Yeah, we'll see if they can put up a win here in this match. It would make things interesting. It would make things very close in the group, but again, mathematically impossible for them to get out as even if they win every pick from here, they end up tied in point difference with Max Win, who has the head-to-head -head win over Manic Oreos. And Oompa Loompa Factory would only go down to a positive two point difference, whereas both Max Win and Manic Oreos are at minus one in that case. So even if they win from here, uh, Manic Oreo is unable to get out of the group, but can make it close, can still make it interesting in this match. And obviously, with only two matches left, just this match and the one between Grease Monkey Deluxe and SoCal Supremacy, really hoping for a tiebreaker in this match, if nothing else, because we have not seen that tiebreaker all throughout the group stage so far. Not a single match has gone to that tiebreaker. That is, uh, of course, an original song by Katagora and Ikaruga Nex. So definitely wanting to see that one at least once through the weekend. Yeah, I mean, always with how much work goes into some of these original songs, some of the tiebreakers go, or some of the tiebreaker maps that go alongside them. Always wish to say, see it play it at least once. But Oompa Loompa Factory for now on their own pick, gonna go into the DT1. This is a pretty simple DT1, just AR 10.3, 262 BPM, aim map, gourmet travelogue mapped by uh i'm not gonna try it or i'm gonna completely butcher this name it's a uh, for all link or something do you yeah, know how to pronounce, the name pronounce that um oh the mapper name uh yeah yeah Sia link probably yeah uh, that sounds think, a lot that, better i think that j should be pronounced like a y so Sia link mm -hmm. probably don't quote me on that. That's that's what I think. That's what I think it should be. Either way, um, as is pretty standard here, the DT1 going to be an aim map. Um, as is also pretty standard for Corsair's open pools. It's going to be a little bit more awkward aim heavy than typical for uh, kind of a farm focused DT1, as you might see in a lot of other tournaments. Of course, with every map being custom, uh, that tends to be the case for a lot of mappers. Uh, it's just more interesting to put pattern aim and awkward aim into maps um, as somebody who's taken up mapping a little bit recently. It's it's just more interesting. Um, mapping patterns and mapping shapes and mapping stuff a little awkward here and there is 
uh, far more interesting to map and far more fun to map than just uh, your standard farm mapping, even though that might be quicker and more comfortable for the player. In the meantime, though, we get the rosters in for both teams. Raph, GPO, Amacetic, Riot in for uh, Oompa Loompa Factory alongside Defi, Suntan, Chalk Gamer, RNG, and Mains in for Manic Oreos. And right now the combo is looking very, very good for Oompa Loompa Factory on the four-way FC. A couple of early breaks for RNG and Mains on the side of Manic Oreos and another one to come there for Mains as well. Yeah, Riot gonna find it as well, but there's a three-way reset for the side of Manic Oreos. Only Suntan now holding on to the FC, but he is all alone up against three big combos from the side of Oompa Loompa Factory, and it is already a 300,000 score lead for them, even with the Defi break. And there goes Suntan, and this pick already looking to run away from Manic Oreos very quickly. Yeah, and at this point now, you're looking at a 5-2 scoreline here for Oompa Loompa Factory. You don't want to call it until it's over, but we're halfway through. The FC is still going for Amacetic. The Reverse Choke still going for Raph GPO. The support is still just as good for Riot as it is for the best combo on the side of Manic Oreos coming out of Chalk Gamer. So unless we see a full team wipe and a full team pop-off for Manic Oreos, uh, it's going to be pretty rough here in the second half. RNG does find a break on that longer stream. And even though the rest of the team is able to combo, so is the t entire team for Oompa Loompa Factory. Defi will find a miss on one of the game patterns. There goes Chalk Gamer. That's the highest combo gone now for Manic Oreos. And from here, it's just even further score lead extension for Oompa Loompa Factory. Riot missing doesn't even matter. Amacetic missing doesn't even matter. The score lead is still going up in favor of Oompa Loompa Factory. The fact that they can lose two of their biggest combos and still have the score lead increase in favor of them just goes to show how ridiculously one-sided this pick truly is. Raph GPO closing in on 1 million score by himself on the reverse choke. Going to be able to put up a score of that margin. And once again, it's a 2v4. Raph GPO Amacetic by themselves would have been enough on this DT1. I believe that is the second 2v4 for the side of Oompa Loompa Factory in this matchup. Yes, uh, it is. Yeah. And once again, it comes down to bottom half of Manic Oreos not really able to perform on this one. RNG forced to fill. It's an unfortunate circumstance for their side not having their full roster, but that's going to be the fifth point on the board for Oompa Loompa Factory. And now Manic Oreos, at this point, you're playing for pride, can't make it out of the group, but can at least get another point on the board here with your own pick. There's still that free mod one, that awkward aim alt map, and I think they should probably pick that one here. Yeah, we'll see if that's where they want to go. Um, I definitely think the alt picks make a lot of sense here for Manic Oreos, but uh, we'll see if that if they agree with us here on the desk or if they want to dip into something else. Still the Nomad 1, uh, actually Nomad 1 banned, still the Nomad 2 available, uh, still the Hidden 1 available, still the Hidden 3 available, uh, but it is just gonna be that free mod one. We're gonna go into some alt here once again, 150 BPM, um, pretty much standard alt map in this. Mm -hmm. You've got your awkward aim, you've got your aim control, you've got a few flow patterns mixed in there, which I think is what makes this one overall different to the Nomad 3. But the main difference on this one is the free mod constraints. You're going to need to have a hidden and a hard rock on this one. And of which I feel like Corian Maluko on the HR is going to go absolutely insane. But for Manic Oreos, they've also got a player like Suntan or Mains or Chalk Gamer even to take that hard rock. So probably going to be fine on that end. It's a more accessible map because it's in the free mod pool. All right. Again, we're probably seeing the exact same roster for Manic Oreos. Just playing for Pride. Uh, Suntan RNG mains and Shock Gamer in once again, you have to assume for this team. Uh, as for Oompa Loompa Factory, uh, I'm not entirely sure who we're going to see for them. On the previous alt pick, when we did see that Nomad 3 earlier on, it was Kalangi, Amacetic, Raf GPO, and Corian Maluko. Probably a pretty similar roster that did still end up being very close. It was only a win by 120,000 points. 
for the side of Manic Oreos. Uh, we will see Riot sub in for Corian Maluko, it looks like, with the rest of the roster. Pretty much the same here. Hidden Hard Rock for Raph TPO. Hidden for Riot, Kalongi, and Amasetic on the Nomad. Hard Rock for Chalk Gamer. Hidden for Suntan. Nomad for RNG and Mains. Actually, Mains on the Hidden here. Um, Mains overmodding both of these free mods, by the way, taking the, uh, well, rather, Manic Oreos overmodding both of these free mods. So Suntan and Mains uh, both taking the hidden on this one. And of course, on the previous pick, it was Shot Gamer and Mains both taking the hard rock. I'm surprised to see Riot in on this one over Corian Maluko, especially on the hidden, not necessarily Riot's comfort mod by any stretch. And we see the breaks coming in. It's two big combos to two right now with a slightly higher recovery on the side of mains. With that accuracy as well. But that drop from RNG now combo lead heavily in favor from the Luma Factory. This is still pretty close despite the combo lead right now for Oompa Loompa Factory. Kalongi Raph TPO on the double FC, but there goes Chalk Gamer, who is the only matching FC for Manic Oreos. There goes Raph GPO though, so does find the drop on that hidden hard rock. It's the Nomad FC still holding strong for Kalongi. He was the top performer on that Nomad 3 previously for the side of Oompa Loompa Factory. Was the only FC and was the top score in the entire lobby on that map as well, so... Kalongi here once again to try and pull this back the way of Oompa Loompa Factory and try and end this match out early. They are on match point now. Uh, so just trying to get out of this one with the win here for Oompa Loompa Factory. Suntan, RNG, and Chalk Gamer are on some good recovery, but Amasetic is matching that recovery. Rapti is not too far behind Chalk Gamer as well. Uh, so, oh, there goes Kalongi though. Massive trade across both teams. Raft GPO, Kalongi, Riot, Suntan, Chalk Gamer, Defons all breaking. It's RNG and Amacetic to hold, but that's a 100,000 score lead buffer in favor of Oompa Loompa Factory. So there needs to be more from their side if Manic Oreos want to take this map back. And that's a three way reset for Oompa Loompa Factory with only a trade coming up from Mains. Oh, but there goes Chalk Gamer oh as well, God, and Mains, both misses. of the two of them. Shane missing a lot, and it looks like Mains is combo uh, cursor dancing a little bit, sorry. So it's looking a little bit grim, despite RNG there with the clutch combo to try and steal this one back. Amacetic just matching him at every step of the way, and the other members of Manic Oreos just not really with their heads in the game right now. So it's probably gonna be the win for Oompa Loompa Factory going into the last third of this map. 160k score lead. No combo to speak of other than RNG's. Yeah, you have Suntan on a good recovery here, 500 combo, but it's just not enough. 170,000 score lead almost now for Oompa Loompa Factory. And uh, I think the 4v8 here may be getting to the mental a little bit for Manic Oreos. It's always tough playing a match fully out like this, knowing you're just down so many options during the entire course. There goes Amacetic though. That FC's gone, or high combo's gone, but there's only so much time in the le uh, map left. It's a still 150,000 score lead for Implement Factory, even with RNG holding this big combo. I just don't think there's enough time for this to come back. It's going to be close if RNG can hold, but Riot and Kalongi are not too far behind. Chain misses for Suntan. Riot does find the break, though. That's one of the bigger combos down for Oompa Loompa Factory, but this score lead is just refusing to budge still up at 130,000, even with those extra misses for Riot and Amacetic. Chain misses across the board, and there goes RNG. There goes the big combo. There goes the map. There goes the match as Oompa Loompa Factory able to hold on to the score lead. Kalongi having a little bit of trouble in the middle of the map, but able to hold on when everyone else chain missed and able to help secure that 130,000 score lead on the last pick here. Oompa Loompa Factory taking the Mac 6-2 over Manic Oreos. And unfortunately for Manic Oreos, that's going to be it for them in this iteration of Course Ace Open. Only able to play a couple of matches, never even had their full roster but we thank them for playing. They put on a good showing, especially for their couple of pick wins and being down to only four players. I mean, being able to win any points in that kind of situation is really, really tough and able to get two points on the board against a really strong team like Oompa Loompa Factory. Very good stuff from them, but Oompa Loompa Factory gonna be taking this one and will move on to the next stage of the tournament.
And they will exit this group as the first seed as well, having won against both Maxwin and Manic Oreos. Uh, both of those matches going 6-2 in their favor. They will be the team that gets out in first there. So congratulations to them. Uh, they are currently a top eight team. And congratulations to Max Win. I believe that is the uh, only upset in any group so far that we have had. No, Doble Huevo uh, also upsetting seven kangaroos, one Bober, as they did double FF, unfortunately. Um, but other than that double FF, that's the only group with an upset so far. Uh, SoCal Supremacy looking to make it two here against Grease Monkey Deluxe. That match currently ongoing uh, started at half past the hour. So we're going to take a short break to get everything switched over and then move over to that match. But for now, congratulations once again to Oompa Loompa Factory for the 2-0 win in their groups and the 6-2 win in this match. Thank you for playing to Manic Oreos. And we'll see you back here in just a couple of minutes for the next matchup.